from the break. In our news in focus segment today, we shall interact with some volunteers from the Ghana Girl Guides Association, Michelle and Fidelia. It is yet another segment of Edge News in Focus here on Joy Learning TV with me, Comfort and Titeria. Well, as you already know, here on the In Focus segment, we interact with phenomenal individuals, personalities, and organizations who have made remarkable impacts in the educational sector. Well, here with us today are young leaders from the Ghana Girl Guides Association, a subsidiary of the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts. They are in the persons of Fidelia Davida Lawson and Michelle Bezra. Without further ado, let's get right to it. Hello and welcome to Edu News in Focus here on Joy Learning TV. Hope you are doing well. Yes, we are doing well. All right. So we are going to get right to it. Um, can you tell us a little about the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts? All right. So the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts is the largest voluntary movement, which is women-led. And we can be found in 153 countries worldwide. Um, we are found also found in five regions. We have Africa, Europe, Asia Pacific, Arab, and Western Hemisphere. Um, also, we do train girls in non-formal education to develop their fullest potentials, yes. All right. Um, what, in your opinion, is the main vision of the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts? So, the vision is to create a world where girls can thrive mm. in, in all matters yeah. and take actions on issues that affect them. All right. So, um, what are some of the programs that you run? Okay, we run various programs, and normally our programs are, as I mentioned earlier, non-formal education. So, we our programs are usually centered in schools. We have um, MHH, which is menstrual health and hygiene. So, we train the girls on how to manage their periods, um, how to observe hygienic practices during their periods and all that's related to periods. We also have self smart and you know in a global world where even when the pandemic came, the interna internet became um, a very, uh, how do I say it? Pivotal, it, like yeah, 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 that people usually used. So cyberbullying and all that threats started coming up and so they, they became the need to bring about a project that would speak for girls and also make sure that whenever they are surfing online, they are safe. Mm. So that's how come Surf Smart came about. We also have um, financial literacy programs. Mm. Um, so these are programs that's the initial, um, sorry, the initial onset of this program was geared towards KIS. So the, the aim was to to train them on skills, like skills training. So we give them skills training on soap making, catering, and bead making, also sewing. So when they are done, we give them a capital to go and start um, a trade of their own and a business of their own. So we wanted to empower them financially. And also we have um, 4G2T um, for girls to thrive. It's also related to menstrual hygiene management. Um, we also have other programs that we run. Yeah. All right. Um, so you made mention of the financial um, literacy. literacy program. Mm -hmm. um, how does one apply? How does one qualify to be a part of the program? Okay. So with these programs, we we normally it's normally for people we find vulnerable. So with the first one, we did it with. Okay. And also we are looking at starting another project, which is still geared towards financial literacy, but we are targeting teenage mothers. Okay. And also we have another project on financial literacy for basket weavers up north. Yes. All right. Um, do they have to be members of the Girl Guides Association or like I want to know the procedure one, you know, goes through to be a part of the financial literacy program? Okay, they don't necessarily have to be a member of the Girl Guides. Um, so 
normally when it starts, we call out to girls and young women. If you're interested, you come register. Everybody is accepted. All right. You don't have to be girl guide. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, so coming to Fidelia, right, um, can you talk a little bit about the Firewall Project? Okay, so the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts works under a program called Safe Smart, geared towards internet safety for girls online and how best they can use the internet and all the resources that it allows us to have. So uh, we went through a six month strain, girls from three different countries, Ghana, Uganda, Liberia. So we went through six months of training on advocacy. So geared towards um, reaching out to people who have the influence and the power to create change regarding cyberbullying or internet issues that affect females around the world. So after the six weeks of, six weeks of, of advocacy, each team from each country, so I think each country had about three teams, mm -hmm. three to four teams. So the teams from each country sit down, think about a project, something that's affecting girls in their country and then they, s they find a solution to it or a possible solution to it, and then they make a plan, an advocacy plan, mm -hmm. and then they pitch it to the World Association team. So that's WAX, the, world, the global team. And if they win, they are given the grant to follow through with their project. All right. So um, still regarding cyberbullying, I believe you've conducted a lot of research and survey on the you mm -hmm. know issue. So um, how many or what specific demographic of the Ghanaian populace usually fall victim to cyberbullying? Young people between the ages of 15 to 30. All right, but what exactly is cyberbullying? Cyberbullying is basically using the internet as a tool for bullying. Okay. So we know normal bullying where people mistreat other people, mm -hmm. but then in this case, people hide behind the internet to do the bullying, yes. All right. Um, what are some of the ways, in your opinion, that um, cyberbullying can be curtailed among think, teenagers? Okay, thank you very much. I think it's important that we have collaborations between um, ourselves and people in power, right? Because telling someone to not bully someone is not enough to, to get them to stop bullying someone. So if collaborations with people in power to create laws regarding cyberbullying, so if you bully someone on the internet, these are the repercussions of it. Yes, I think but that's... Okay, so as you said, um, you know, we are hiding behind anonymity to, you know, bully what we call trolling, mm -hmm. right? So um, in the case where you are suggesting that the government or people in power should create sanctions to, you know, um, sanction people who fall victim or mm -hmm. who are culprits of the, this menace, um, how do you also suggest that um, the individual could promote um, internet safety? I think first of all, when you are surfing the internet, right, be mindful of the things that you put online because as we all know, getting information out on the internet is very easy. Someone getting information to it is very, very easy. Also, when someone bullies you and someone shows you, it's very important to report them to the social media app that the person you used to troll so that they can be tracked down and if anything, whatever they have to, has to be done is done. I think a lot of people, a lot of cyberbullying cases go unreported to the, um, the, social, um, the social media sites or the apps that it happens on. So that's a very key thing to do. Always report the people who are trolling or bullying you online. All right. So um, in as much as you are seeing all these negative aspects of the internet, do you think that the internet is a safe tool for especially the youth? I think that if it is used rightly, it is a, a, a very safe tool and it is also a very important tool for growth of the youth. All right. Yeah. So um, I would want to ask, um, some of, um, what are some of the achievements of your team so far? The, um, is it the Firewall Project firewall. page? Yes. So my team is Firewall, her team is Web Guardian, so we are from two different teams. Oh, okay. And uh, even though we are both working on cyberbullying, mine is school focused, hers is community focused. Okay. Hence, it's community focused. Mine is school focused. So at the moment, we want to c um, have um, conferences in schools where we have health professionals, mental health professionals, go to schools, talk to students about um, cyberbullying, its effects, and how they can protect their mental health from cyberbullying. And also, we want to create partnerships with people in power with school leaders so that we can put together clauses in their... Um, their school code of conduct about what will happen to them when they start bully someone else. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, so what are some of the challenges you've encountered so far in your quest to advocate against cyberbullying? Currently, finding the mental health professionals, finding the right collaborations has been very difficult. You reach out to people, they don't um, return your emails, etc. but then we are pushing, so... All right. That leads me to your next question. Um, how do you source for funds, like, in your, you know, journey? Yeah, so currently, um, what GGGA is an NGO, but then the funds that we have at the moment at our disposal is what we were given after we won the grant. Right, the grant was um, 400 um, pounds. Yeah, it was 400 pounds. But then if there's a need to have more funds, then we have to go on fundraising, um, what do you call it, exploits, yeah. All right. Um, so what is the vision of this project in the next five years? Uh, in the next five years, what we want to do is make sure that a lot of young people between the ages of 15 to 25 are conscious of the way that they use the internet, are conscious of other people's feelings, when they are typing things on the internet. I think uh, as a Ghanaian, we all here uh, in Ghana, everyone is happy. You know, we just need internet connection and you are happy. But the thing is, that's because they're not on the receiving end of the messages online. If they were on the receiving end of those messages, then they'll know that not everyone is happy. So we want people to be conscious of the way they use the internet. All right. Um, so have you had any regrets since you started out to embark on this journey have you uh, sat down one day and just thought why did i even begin to do this in the first place for me no i think it's a very important thing to to want to do so i, I for me i haven't but i don't know of michelle yeah. Yeah. all right like what's your inspiration what came to you suddenly to you know begin to do this were you a victim of cyberbullying at any point Personally, I'm not a victim of cyberbullying, but also I think we have all seen what cyberbullying has done to different individuals in our country, different young people in our country. I don't think you need to experience something to want to fight for people who have experienced it. So, yes, I've seen people suffer from it, and I don't think that it should continue. Can you state some of the examples of, you know, instances of cyberbullying? Um, so, example, when people's, um, sorry to say, their videos are leaked online, the kind of messages you see in the threads, you know, people forget that they are also human beings, right? Um, when someone posts a picture of themselves online, you go to the comment sessions, and it's just horrendous, right? And you think, how, how is this person feeling on the other end of their device? So all these instances, you look and you say, no, it's important that Ghanaian youth are reminded that the people they send the messages to are also human beings. All right. So if there's any individual or organization out there that wants to get in contact, how do they reach you? Um, so we have a website, but then we can also leave our numbers and then you can call us directly. And can you tell us what's your website, the name of your so website? So the Ghana Girl Guys Association. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, Michelle, can you also talk to us about your initiative, how you help the community in general? Okay, so our initiative, our team name is Web Guardians. So it's basically nothing far from what they are doing. It's just that our project is tailored towards the community. So we are looking at two communities in Accra. We are looking at Ashai Mine and Jamestown. So the theme of our initiative is not cool, not, not fun, cool. Okay. zero tolerance on cyberbullying. So we, we want that people should desist from cyberbullying, so that's what we've been doing. So we are go doing workshops. We are also planning a cyber safety match, where we are going to march across communities and raise awareness on cyberbullying. And after the match, we are going to sit the individuals down, educate them. We are going to have resource persons come and educate them on the causes of cyberbullying and also the prevention and the places to run to when they are being cyberbullied and also people they need to talk to when they are they fall victims of cyberbullying, yeah. Okay, all right. Um, so I want to know where the Ghana Girl Guides Association is exactly located. Okay, so we have two locations. We have our headquarters and our training center. So the headquarters is located at Makola. Um, it shares a building with EPP Bookshop. Oh, it's okay. right next to the School of Law the Ghana School of Law, and with our training center, is located at Chimota, the forest road. It's adjacent to the police station. 
Yes. Okay, so anyone can just walk in there and, you know, choose to be a member and they would, you know, provide... Yeah. Yes, mm. anyone can walk in there. We are open to everyone. All right. Okay, sure. Do you have any last f or final words you want to share with us regarding your initiative, regarding the Ghana Girl Guides Association, regarding the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts in general? Okay, so I will say that the Ghana Girl Guide Association is in it to help girls develop their fullest potentials and also become responsible citizens of the world. So we encourage each and every girl, regardless of your race, we don't discriminate against religions, no age gap, or you, you wouldn't say that because I'm not within this age group, um, I can't be a member of the Ghana Girl Guides. We welcome individuals from all age groups, as long as you are a girl or you're a young woman. So we have um, the range, it starts from four, four years up to you are old and you don't want to. So we have a saying that we say, once a guide, always a guide. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Um, Fidelia, Derrida, so do you have any last or final words you would want to share? I think just to echo her, we are in this for women and women empowerment and for them to thrive so our doors are open. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much for making time and for coming to share your experience and your initiative and I would want to say it's a very phenomenal journey you are on and I wish you all the best. Thank you. All right, so that will be all for today's segment on the Edu News in Focus here on Joy Learning TV. Catch you same time next week. My name is Comfort Aunt Titeria. That will be all for today on Edu News 360 here on Joy Learning TV. Keep watching Joy Learning for all your favorite educational programs. My name is Comfort Aunt Titeria.